Hello friends, what we have here is a problem related to a bathtub waste outlet. Many bathtubs have a strainer inside the outlet. It is built into the outlet to stop things uh, falling inside the drains. This one doesn't bring a strainer. There are many outlets like this one that don't bring a strainer and that way many things can fall in there, big things, solid things, like the cover of a shampoo bottle or a toothbrush. We also have the problem of hairs going down the drains. Normal people drop their hair, and uh, some people drop more hair than others, and it ends up clogging up the, the drains. And when that happens, then we have to be pumping there with a tool or even uh, pushing our snake down there to catch the hairs and pull them out and that's quite a problem. The drains of a bathtub uh, usually have a structure similar to this one. Having to take off all those pipes to be able to get at anything solid that is clogged up there like uh, the top of a shampoo or a, a toothbrush, it's uh, very difficult, practically impossible. So any repairs that we have to do here will be always much more expensive than any preventative measures we may take. So, putting a strainer in this bathtub is essential. We can't take a bath or a shower without having a strainer there, getting hold of all the hairs, anything else that might go down there. And for these kind of tubs that don't bring a strainer built into the, the outlet, we find these kinds of strainers in the shop. But the thing is that these kind of strainers, they tend to get clogged up very quickly and then the water doesn't drain down the pipes and we end up having a shower with our feet immersed in a pool of soapy water. So what we have to do is a better strainer. And this is what we will do in this video. Let's imagine that this is the outlet of our bath. And this is the inside diameter of the outlet. In our outlet we have a top part that is a bit wider than the tubing of the drains and they are both soldered at that point leaving a small rim all around the inside of the tubing. We have many options. We can use a mesh like this one, cut a circle a bit bigger than the hole and push it in. The problem is this mesh is too soft, too flexible. And the risk we have here is it might get out of shape and fall out of place or even be pushed down the drains due to this flexibility. And then to get it out of the drains is practically impossible. Just about as difficult as getting the, the top of a shampoo bottle out of there. So clearly it can't be something flexible. It has to be something hard and fixed in place. Now, if we put something solid in there, something like this, for example, at the top here, this won't go through. The problem is that up there it might float around, we can, might dislodge it with our feet, we might step on it, we can even hurt ourselves if we step on it. However, this is an option. All the strainers sold in hardware stores are of this kind. You just put them on top and they kind of float around there and they get dislodged and so on, but that's what the, you find, you'll find in hardware stores. Now, our best option would be able to get this filter inside the top part of the, of the tube, of the outlet, and get it to sit on this rim that is formed by the, the drain. We can lay it inside there in such a way that we can step on it and it won't get dislodged and we won't hurt ourselves. However, we have to be able to pull it out after we finish bathing so we can clean it to take out all the hairs and so on, and then put it back in again. These are materials taken out of computers. They have different forms and can be used as strainers. We could use any of these. It is evident that they have a high flow capacity. However, the divisions are near enough one to the other to be able to stop hairs from going down. The problem with these is that the diameter isn't exact to the size of the outlet. I can cut this one in these parts to make it fit in, but then it would be hanging only from these four wires around here. And I would have to add a handle to be able to pull it out. 
This is the kind of work two others do. We have to make a ring on one side of the wire and another ring on the other side of the wire to catch them on the strainer to be able to pull it out and push it in. Then we turn the wire to make a ring, but we leave it a bit open to be able to catch the, the strainer. Once we finish on one side, we have to measure the distance where we will make our other ring. Once we finish the second ring, we need a, a cutting nippers to cut off the excess wire. If we don't have a cutting nipper, we can use a common pliers, but we have to cut the wire before turning it. Once installed, we have to close the rings so they don't fall out. So now we can put it inside the outlet and then pull it out again. So now we can cut this wire, and this one, and this one, and this one, to the exact size of the inside diameter of the outlet, to a size that it fits uh, perfectly, with a bit of movement, but not too small that it might go down the drains. That's one example. And the same handle, we can uh, use it for any other uh, strainer we, we can make with these recycled materials. In that way, we can put them inside of our outlet and pull it out again, as long as the outside diameter of our, of our strainer is the right size for the outlet. And that's what we can do with these kind of elements recycled parts from computers. But I'm going to try another option. I'm going to make one, but it requires some tools, a soldering torch. I'm going to copy this same strainer, brazing some bits of this laminated brass. In this way, I will be able to build it of the precise diameter I need, so it sits on the rim formed by the inner tube of my drain. I'm going to braze this uh, bronze with a hard solder, because if I solder this brass with tin solder, most probably when I'm soldering one little bit of metal, the other solders will unsolder, because they're much too near one and the other. With hard solder, there's a bigger possibility of soldering one little bit of brass in one place without affecting the raised materials very next to it, because the temperature it has to reach is very high. The first thing I'm going to solder is the outer ring. I already cleaned it, I've put flux on it, and an important thing here is that if you put an excess of uh, hard solder on the ring or on the bits of brass, the solder, the excess should stay on the inside of the ring. If you get it on the outside of the ring, it'll affect the diameter of the ring and it won't fit in the hole. You'll have to 
sandpaper it to get that excess off. Now we're going to have to try it out in the tub. It worked perfect. Now I have to solder the other sides of the bits of brass and make a, a ring to pick it up and push it in. There we are. What do you think? Looks good, eh? Now we have to let it cool off and we go and put it in the tub. Now here we are with our strainer made by ourselves, our bathtub waste outlet strainer. We push it in till it sits on the rim of the the tube of the drains, and there it stays while we have our shower. After our shower, we pull it out, we take the hairs out of it, we obviously throw those away into the waste basket, and we put it back into its place. There even is space there in case we want to put a plug to have a bath. Well, that's it. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe, leave your comments, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.